floor. Right, going on to the next bit. So we're talking about axioms. Therefore, our goal for the next few pages is to work out the consequences of Einstein's axioms. We will begin by using a technique that Einstein himself often favoured, the thought experiment. Specifically, we want to explore the consequences of assuming that the speed of light remains constant for all observers, no matter how they are moving relative to each other. To do this, we are going to imagine a clumsy looking clock called a light clock. The clock consists of two mirrors between which a beam of light bounces back and forth. We can use this as a clock, counting each bounce of the light beam as one tick. For example, if the mirrors are one metre apart, then it takes light approximately 6.67 nanoseconds to complete one round trip. You can check this number for yourself. The light has to travel two metres and does so at a speed of 299 million 792.458 metres every second. This could be a very high precision clock with around 150 million ticks corresponding to one heartbeat. Now imagine putting the light clock on a train that is whizzing along past someone standing on a station platform. The million dollar question is, how fast does the clock on the train tick according to the person on the platform? Until Einstein, everybody assumed that it ticks at the same rate, one tick every 6.67 nanoseconds. Figure two, that's this one, don't know if you can see it, but there you go. That's uh, VT on the bottom and CT, the arrow is going up there. No, that's supposed to be CT. That's supposed to be VT. Uh, there's a one meter. And uh, there's a general overview of it. <clears throat> Figure two shows how one tick of the clock on the train looks according to the person standing on the platform. Because the train is moving, the light must travel farther in one tick as determined from the platform. Put another way, the starting point of the light beam's journey is not in the same place as it ends, as its end point, according to the person on the platform, because the clock has moved during the tick. In order for the clock to tick at the same rate as it does when it stands still, the light must travel a little bit faster. Otherwise, it could not complete its longer journey in 6.67 nanoseconds. That, this is exactly what happens in Newton's worldview because the light is given a helping hand by the motion of the train. But, and this is the crucial step, applying Einstein's logic means that the light cannot speed up because the speed of light must be the same to everyone. This has a disturbing consequence that the moving clock must genuinely take longer to tick simply because the light has farther to travel from the perspective of the person on the platform. This thought experiment teaches us that if we are to assert that the speed of light is a constant of nature, as Maxwell seems to be trying to tell us, then it follows that the same tick, that the time ticks, so, then it follows that the time ticks at different rates depending on how we are moving relative to someone else. In other words, absolute time is not consistent with the notion of a universal light speed. It is very important it is very important to emphasise that this conclusion is not specific to light clocks. There is no important difference between a light clock and a pendulum clock, which works by bouncing the pendulum between two places once every second. Or, for that matter, an atomic clock, which counts the number of peaks and troughs of a light wave emitted from an atom to generate the ticks. Even the rate of decay of the cells in your body could be used as little clocks and the conclusion would be the same because all these devices measure the passing of time. The light clock is in fact a bit of an old chestnut in the teaching of Einstein's theory and provokes no end of confused discussion because it is such an unfamiliar clock. It can be tempting to attribute the weird conclusion we have just reached to this lack of familiarity rather than to recognise it as an insight into the nature of time itself. To do so would be to make a bad mistake. Our sole reason for picking a light clock rather than any other type of clock is that we can exploit Einstein's bizarre demand that light should travel at the same speed for everyone to draw our conclusions. Any conclusion that we draw from thinking about the light clock must also apply to any other kind of clock for the following reason. Imagine that we seal ourselves into a box with a light clock and a pendulum clock 
and set them ticking away in sync. If they are very accurate clocks, they will stay in sync and tell the same time forever. Now let's put the box onto the moving train. According to Einstein's second axiom, we should not be able to tell whether we are moving. But if the light clock behaved differently than the pendulum clock, they would drift out of sync and we could say for certain from inside our seal box that we were moving. So a pendulum clock and a light clock must count time in exactly the same way and that means that if the moving light clock is running slow as determined by the person on the platform then so too must all other moving clocks run slow. This isn't some kind of optical illusion. The passage of time is slowed down on the moving train according to someone on the platform.